All right, let's take a look at some more complex changes to sine, cosine, and tangent functions. The first thing we're going to talk about is when the period of the function changes. Now remember, the period is the time it takes um, before the function repeats. These are all periodic, which means they repeat the same pattern over and over again. So let's take a look at sine. If we were to start right here, notice the graph goes up back to zero, down, back to zero, and then it starts the same pattern again. It goes up, back to zero, down, back to zero. Okay, that exact pattern is repeated over and over. This is one period of the sine function. And notice it takes from zero to two pi for that happen. So the period for sine is two pi. Um, cosine's period, cosecant's period, and secant's period are also all two pi normally. Um, tangent and cotangent actually repeat every pi radians, so their period is pi. But what we're going to talk about is what happens if there's a change to the function and the period is either lengthened or shortened, and how can you tell? Okay, so <clears throat> this letter right here means omega. <laughs> okay, so notice it says if you have instead of just sine x, you have sine omega x which means you have something multiplied by the x in your sign. That is going to change your period. It will no longer just be 2 pi. It will be 2 pi divided by that number. So for our example here, we have next to our y equals sine x, we have y equals sine 2x. And again, that's how we know there's been a change to the period or the time it takes before the function repeats itself. Okay. Um, there's been a change to that because we have something multiplied by our, our x. And what we do to decide what the new period is for sine, since the normal period is 2 pi, we take 2 pi and divide it by that number. What I get is pi. So this tells me when I have sine 2x, my period is um, happening every pi radians. And I actually have a graph of that. So again, if I started at 0 here, notice the graph goes up to 0, back up to 0. Okay, and then it repeats up, zero, down, zero, repeat. And notice it's happening every pi radians now instead of every two pi like it did. Now a lot of people think, well, that's weird. Um, why would the period be shorter if, I, if it's um, times two? And the reason for that is notice what it happens is it gets there twice as fast. Okay, so instead of taking clear until two pi, it gets there twice as fast. So it shortens your period, right? So that is what it looks like when the period is shortened. It's the same graph. It's just been kind of squished in a little bit, okay? And that's how we find um, the length of the period for sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant. Whatever that number is that's multiplied by x, you divide 2 pi by that number, and that tells you what your new period is. For tangent and cotangent, that number multiplied by the x, you just divide um, pi by that number. So for example, if I had the tangent of 2x, its period would be pi over 2. Okay. The other thing that can happen to a graph is a phase shift or an amplitude change. And we've talked a little bit about amplitude change. Um, we know amplitude is determined by the number in front of sine, cosine. Tangent actually is undefined amplitude, so we're not going to worry about amplitude for um, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent because they go on forever vertically, um, and so defining an amplitude them does not make much sense. Okay, the amplitude is the height of our wave. So here, if we have um, sine x, okay, again, if we're looking at it, um, notice the highest it gets is 1, and the lowest it gets down here is negative 1. The amplitude is 1. Um, that's the distance from the middle of our wave here to the top and to the bottom. Okay, so regular sine x has an amplitude of 1. Notice there's nothing there. Um, if we were to multiply, for example, by 2, what would happen? Well, that would make our waves twice as high. Our amplitude is the absolute value of that number in front of sine. So now the amplitude is 2. Notice these waves shown here have a height of 2 up from the center and they're down to down from the center is where they end. Okay, so that's what multiplying by a number in front can do. All right, if it's a negative number, your your um, if this were negative two, our amplitude would still just be two. 
um, the negative would reflect our graph over the x-axis, but we would still put positive 2 for the amplitude. The other thing that can happen is called a phase shift. Now what that is, is it's a shift of the graph to the right or to the left. Okay, So the phase has been shifted. I have an example of that here. So on this graph here, the amplitude has changed, and we also have a phase shift. Now you'll see a phase shift as something added or subtracted with your x over here. So if there's something multiplied in front of it, that will change your period. But if there's something added or subtracted in the parentheses with your x, that is going to be a phase shift. It's going to move your graph right or left. And the phase shift happens on phase shift, excuse me, happens on all of these sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And what you do is you take this number, this letter, Greek letter is called phi, <laughs> okay, um, this letter phi, or the number that's been added or subtracted from the end, and you divide it by whatever was multiplied by your x, okay? So if we're looking at this example here, first of all, notice in the generic case that they give you up here, you have subtraction. So when we write down phi, we're actually going to put the opposite sign, because the phase shift is phi over omega, those are our names, or the number added or subtracted from the end divided by the number multiplied by your x is what that is. Okay, That's your phase shift. And again, notice in here, this was minus, and we have a positive phi here. So when you write down your number, you're going to change the sign. Okay, um, This number will keep its sign, should it have a different one. So here, our phi, this is our phi on the end, and notice it's positive, so we're going to write negative pi. Divide by the number multiplied in front of your x. There's nothing there, so we just use 1. So this would have a phase shift of negative pi, which means it's going to move the graph to the left, pi. So remember that sine usually started here. If this were just 2 sine x, it would start here, up, back down to 0, negative 2, down to 0. But what's happened is it's been shifted over pi to the left. So now our zero here is at negative pi instead of at zero. Okay, and this peak that was at pi over two is at negative pi over two. So it's shifting the entire graph to the left. Okay. So that is how we find our period, our amplitude, and our phase shift. Um, we're going to go through and do some examples. Okay.